Hey, it's syndicated radio talk show host, author, singer, Al Cole, welcoming you to another edition of People of Distinction, the talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. I come from CBS Radio. My shows are nationally syndicated. And I've helped pave the way to treating women, guys too, with the dignity that they deserve. And I do that with my show, People of Distinction, aired on top networks and uh, yeah, it's very dignified networks too. Apple's iTunes radio network under their professional news talk division. They air CBS Radio and Fox News, NPR, BBC, everything. C-SPAN 2, best talk in the country, around the world on Apple's iTunes network under News Talk. And also, my shows, uh, they go out to Ariana Huffington's uh, Thrive Global Network as well. Ariana is the founder of the great Huffington Post. So we get a lot of feature for our guests that way. And I'm a major media consultant. That means that I help people to make a profit from what they do with their books and uh, speaking programs, uh, podcasts, everything, coaching programs. Uh, once they uh, get into my media consulting, I teach them how to interview even better, use media in the way that it was intended to make a profit at what they do. And if you want to email me at anything that I do, hey, I want you to email me at alcoholic at gmail.com. You heard me right. That's A-L-C-O-L-E-H-O-L-I-C at gmail.com. And I really want to thank my CBS radio listeners for coming up with that handle, alcoholic. Seems like from day one, my listener has been saying, Al, we love what you're doing there, brother. In fact, we're hooked on it. We're alcoholics. And you can visit my website, peopleofdistinction.org. Coming up, a guy that uh, you're really going to enjoy. He's a down-home guy from the South. And he's got that Southern drawl to prove it. And, you know, Southern people have this special, you know, we've heard about Southern kindness and hospitality and all that stuff and the fried chicken and come on over, come on over for you know for lunch or dinner and you know, have a little bit of grits and jowls, all of that stuff. Now I'm not saying that this guy has uh, you know he eats grits and jowls. He probably maybe he's even a vegetarian. You never know because he's got a great mind, and his book is all about that southern. Fairness and decency and kindness and all of that stuff. So you got to stick around. And his name is Otis G. Stevenson. Yeah, we like that. Otis G. Stevenson. And his book is It Only Seems Like Yesterday. So it's kind of nostalgic that way, too. We look back and, uh, you know, we can honor some of the things that we've done in our life yesterday. And we can update it to today, and we can shoot it out there and make a great tomorrow, too. So Otis is a deep guy. He's going to be talking about that stuff. And in his book, It Only Seems Like Yesterday, it's actually 22 stories with morals about fairness, decency, kindness. And you could wrap it all up with love. Hey, we talk that way on People of Distinction. I know my listening audience, you love to hear about love. So Otis is going to tell us about that through his book, and it's available on Amazon. So I want you to run to Amazon, order his book. It only seems like yesterday. And I will say that he was brought to us by one of the big book publishers around, and that's UR Link Publishing. If you want to move a book, yeah, well, UR Link, they're your book movers. So go to urlinkpublishing.com. Welcome, Otis, to People of Distinction with Al Cole. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine, Al. Yeah, we're going to talk about it here. We're going to be talking about some of the fine things in life, fairness and decency, kindness, all of that stuff, and it's all packed up in your book with 22 stories. It only seems like yesterday. So tell us about it here. You wrote that book, and uh, you wrote it about maybe some of your experiences with fairness, decency, and kindness. Uh, how long ago did you write that book? And let's uh, hear a little bit about what that book is about, Otis. I come out with the book, and it took me about two years to write it. Yeah. Uh, I come out, it come out in 2016. 
okay. originally, and then it was republished in 2018. Yeah. But it's got 22 stories in it, and each story has a moral and a value. It's about coming up to coming up very poor. Mm-hmm. Like I was raised very poor. I didn't let that stop me, though. And, uh, in fact, I learned from it. If you want to be poor and stay poor, that's one thing. But if you want to be poor and try to better yourself and be kind to people and try to seize the opportunities this great country gives us and try to help others get out of a bad situation, kindness is a, is a, the strongest part of anybody's character mm-hmm. if he'll use it. His word is his bond. When you tell somebody something, make it so. Uh, we raised, I was, when I was a kid on the farm, I had certain chores I had to do. And I had, I had to do those chores. It wasn't nobody else to do them. I had to do them. And uh, if I didn't do them, it, it caused a, a problem in the family, and I got punished for that. Mm-hmm. But the bottom line is I've noticed in my life, Treat people decently and carry yourself like a man. Carry yourself like somebody. Treat others like you should be treated, and you'll get along just fine. Mm-hmm. Every chance you get to better yourself, you need to do it. Do good in school. Like like when I was a kid, I was a knucklehead. I didn't try to. I didn't try hard, mm-hmm. I, and I wasted my time in school because I didn't try. That was a valuable hard lesson. So when I got older, I, I mean, when I was grown and had ki- I had a child, I went back to school and graduated. Gra- graduated from co- I graduated from high school. I went back to college and finished. Yeah. Had to take one class at a time, but I did that. But see, being raised like I was raised, you learn a lot of lessons in life. Mm-hmm. And that's what I tried to put in that book. I think everybody alive today has a book inside of them if they just think about it. The people that meant the most to them write a story about events that happened in their life. I think everybody has a book inside of them. Yeah, I think but so. But I was, thank God, I'm, I was able to put mine down on paper. I wrote this book on a Bluebell notebook tablet. <laughs> and I wrote it that way, the old way. I didn't type it up to start with. When I had an idea and had a, had a thought about something that happened in my life, I'd grab that journal and I'd start writing with a pencil. And uh, I wore out a few pencils and uh, several notebooks. But I, the result was I got my book published. Look at that. That's great stuff, Otis. I'll tell you, you need to be congratulated for not only your book, but uh, what you're talking about with your life, learning life lessons with uh, kindness, yeah. particularly being a man uh, through kindness. And, you know, we need to learn that more and more, men particularly. The kindness is not... Uh, a sign of weakness. Kindness can be a sign of strength. Absolutely. And going back to school, getting your college degree, and all of that stuff. So let's talk about it here from uh, maybe some of the stories that you write about. Uh, Your stories, character development. What kind of characters do you usually have uh, in these 22 stories? Well, the the people in the stories are people that I have known and met during my lifetime. Uh, sometimes you see people that that you meet, you don't initially, you don't think much of it, but then the more you're around them, you get close to them, like people that's, that wasn't related to me. I met people in my lifetime that they weren't related to me, but they were just people in the community. And I began to care about them and, I saw the strengths they had and uh, the character they became. I mean, the character, how much character those people had. Yeah. And it was just, I was honored to know them. So I knew one guy that was a garbage collector one time. I'll give you a perfect example. Mm-hmm. And he'd done one of the kindest things one time I've ever seen. He adopted it. He adopted and took care of his little granddaughter. Wow. Her mother died here. The child's mother passed away. And, um, uh, he was a garbage collector back in the Mm seventies and that little girl loved him beyond love. You know, it's beyond belief. And she went with him to a grocery store one time, two days before Christmas Eve. And, uh, 
she had asked for a doll. That's all she asked for, a little girl. Mm-hmm. And he come in there after that, and he bought the doll at a second-hand store. Yeah. And he brought that doll to that little girl. And he said, you don't think Santa Claus will mind me giving you this doll early, do you? <laughs> and that little girl said, no, 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 thank you. <laughs> she was so happy. And I was sitting there griping and com- upset about having to work close to Christmas. Hmm. But she walked away. I looked down at the doll, and it was like $4 on the toe of the doll, on the foot of the doll. Mm-hmm. And uh, $4 was Christmas to her. And I thought how selfish I was and how strong he was for being that kind of man. Yeah. You see, I learned a lesson that day. I tried to remember it till I died. Look at that. It That's was stuff funny. like that I've seen in my lifetime. Yeah, and now you're from, obviously, you're from the South. Uh, what area, yeah, what yeah, area of the South, south. you're from, Otis? I, I live in a, uh, I, the book was came from a place called Willow Springs, North Carolina. Uh-huh. And it was a little town about 30 miles south of Raleigh, North Carolina, which is the capital of North Carolina. Yeah. And it was a rural area back those, back in those days, and it, we farmed. We farmed tobacco, uh, cotton soybeans, corn, stuff like that. And we worked so hard. We done it the old way, the, I mean, hands-on kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's, where the, that's where the stories came from, that kind of background stuff I saw in my time and people that meant so much to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man, I, I really like it. And, yeah, in fact, I'm going to make a quick reflection to my listeners right now, and then we'll get back into your book. It only seems like yesterday. People, this goes out to you, my listening audience. You know, we are all very, very special. Can you imagine anything more special than just being alive at all? You were called, kind of maybe even tapped on that shoulder and said, all right, it's your turn. Get out there. You're born. And one of the biggest things we have in common, people, is we're all born babies. Now, that means something here because that baby still lives in you. When you came out as a baby, you looked around. I know you had to say, wow, I'm here. I made it. I'm actually alive. Greatest blessing in the world, people, just to be alive at all. And now that baby looks around and says, I want to learn more about love. I love life. Thank you, life, for inviting me into this beautiful experience. And as you're doing that, you're being grateful. You feel grateful for life. You don't want to hurt nobody. And the kindness, the decency, the fairness, all the wonderful things that I was was talking about, that is inside of you. Now, you can have some hard knocks. Maybe you're an adult now and things aren't looking as as good. And you're saying, oh, man, now life, boy, I'll tell you, it's a hard road and this and that. You're complaining. But every once in a while, try to get back into that innocence of love, people. From whence you came, you know, that baby, that innocent baby just saying, I love life. And all you have to do, just reflect, like Otis does, on some of the love that you've given, the love that you've received. You can elevate yourself that way. And as you do that, you're feeling better about life. You go out there and you treat people better, too, because when you feel good, you can treat people in a feel-good manner. And that's what Otis does with these 22 stories with morals about fairness, decency, and kindness. In his marvelous book, It Only Seems Like Yesterday. And, you know, you can go to Amazon today and you can order that wonderful book. Otis, we have some minutes left in uh, the Spotlight interview. So with your book, It Only Seems Like Yesterday, you're talking about a lot of things, of course, that you did yesterday in former years and the 22 stories. A lot of times they're about people that you actually met, maybe certain stories about you. How about the future, Otis? Where do you go from here to develop even more fairness and decency and kindness in your life? Where do you go from here, Otis? Well, I tell you what, it's funny you mention that. Let me tell you something that happened today. Mm-hmm. I'm a deputy sheriff, okay? Oh, yeah. yeah. And I'm, Andy I'm, Griffith. Uh, I... Andy and Barney. That was, that was, they were in North Carolina, right? The Andy Griffith show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Okay. But I'm a deputy sheriff, and i tell you something that happened today that I will take that memory to my grave with. Let me tell you a story. I was in a courtroom today, and I I went in. I worked that court, 
And this lady walked up to me and she said, oh, my God, you're Otis. I said, yeah, how'd you know that? She says, listen to this. Now, you ready for this? She said, you wrote me a ticket 17 years ago. Hmm. And she said, I can remember it like it was yesterday. She said, my grand, my kids were scared because you pulled me over. Hmm. And you saw they were getting scared. And you told me, said, young lady, I said, uh, I need to see your license. And the license, the name on the license wasn't the name you gave me because she had just gotten married. Uh-huh. And I, I took her to my patrol car and I showed her the computer and I said, look, it's not the same name. She said, well, I can explain that. She said, I got married about two months ago. Mm-hmm. I said, okay, and you haven't had your license changed, right? She said, no. She, he said, I said to her, I said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Congratulations on getting married, by the way. Mm-hmm. And I says, and secondly, I'm going to write you a warning citation. It's not going to cost you anything, not going to bother your road, your, your license or anything. And then when you get your name changed, bring it to a lawman of any department, and he'll sign off on it, and you can throw it away for my part. Hmm. And she said, what? She said, are you going to do that to me? I said, yes, I'm going to do that to you. I want your little children. I said, I don't want them to, I'm not going to write you a citation to cost you money. Because there's no reason for it. I said it was you. You got married. You forgot about your license. You take care of it, okay? She said, "I will. I will." And she looked up there above my visor in my patrol car. She said, "Are those your grandkids?" I said, <laughs> "I said, yeah. I happen to have a couple of pictures." She said, "May I?" I said, "Yeah. Look at them." She looked at my grandkids, and she remembered that to this day. Wow. Seventeen years ago, hmm. and that's that's what I was telling you about. People will forget what you do with them. They'll, they'll forget what you say to them. Mm-hmm. But the average person in life never forgets. Now, listen to this. Never forgets how you treat them. Yeah. Yeah. And they never forget it. Look at that. If you're kind to them, they'll never forget it. I in the Sam Hill after 17 years, and she walk up and start calling me out by my name. <laughs> Holy my good grief. Look at that. But it's how you treat people, man. That's that's just I learned that and that's what I wrote about in my book. My the next book, What's in the Future for Me, like you asked about, is I'm writing I'm gonna be starting writing my third book in just a few months. Mm-hmm. It's about law enforcement. It's gonna have about fifty stories in it. Yeah. Concerning law enforcement. I was on an elite unit for ten years called the warrant unit we went out and hunted people down and locked them up and i'm gonna write about that yeah that's my future that's my next book look at that you you got a full life there otis i'll tell you and on people of distinction we like that we go from yesterday and to the present and to tomorrow our future yeah and we keep going on and on and on life you know life is a long time thing precious gift yes it needs to be looked at like that. Absolutely. This is great stuff. And I'm going to cap it off with a little reflection of my own, as I do on People of Distinction. Again, this goes out to you, my listening audience. Uh, Otis is uh, a man with integrity. That means something. And see, when you have integrity, it just doesn't come because, uh, well, you know, you were born that way or something. Because we're all born with uh, integrity anyway. That baby... You know, that baby has to be molded. And then when you're molded, sometimes you can go downhill, you can go uphill. But one of the things that Otis does is he honors other people. See, integrity is not just the way we feel about ourselves. It's particularly the way we feel about others and the way that we treat others. And you've been hearing Otis talking about treating people with kindness, treating people with decency, They remember that. They come back and they treat you with kindness and decency as well. We're human beings. We're made that way. And one other suggestion, people, this goes out to you on people of distinction. Uh, Prayer. Yeah. Now, a lot of people maybe aren't praying people, but everybody prays sometime for something. And one of the things that you can do in your life When you pray the next time, don't just pray for you and say, whoa, boy, please help me out. If you help me out this time, I'll never do it again. 
Don't just pray for that uh, loved one of yours that might need a prayer, but include somebody who you don't even know, or maybe somebody who you used to know and you lost track 17 years ago or something, and say a prayer that way too for somebody that you think might need it. And it doesn't even have to be in your community or this country. You can say a prayer for somebody in another country. It's a big, big world. As you say a prayer for somebody else, you're spreading the love that way. You're spreading the love and the kindness. And also, when you say that prayer for somebody else with that love, put it in, make it sent out to that person through another person that you love. And so you could say, well, this is going out to somebody who needs it right now. I'm not even sure about who that is. And it's going out in the name of uh, my my Uncle Joe <laughs> or something, or my, my Aunt Tilly, you know, that sort of thing. And so now there are two other people here involved, the person who you're saying the prayer for, and also that loved one of yours. And they both receive that prayer, and maybe they shoot it back to you, and now everybody is elevated. See, we can do that, people, because love is never dies. And love is an energy that you can transmit outward, positively affect the lives of the people around you. You start doing that, guess what? You're a person of distinction. (laughs) Hey, that's why I named my show People of Distinction. And certainly Otis is that too. Otis G. Stevenson and his book, It Only Seems Like Yesterday. I want you to order that book at Amazon.com. And remember, he was brought to us by UR Link Publishing, one of the best in the publishing world. You got a book that uh, you want to get out there, make it a success. Well, UR Link can help you that way. Go to URLinkPublishing.com. Thank you so much, Otis, for being my special guest here today on People of Distinction with Al Cole. It's really been my pleasure. Thank you so much. You ready for this? Well, This yeah. is an interesting story. On June 2nd, 1990, I was involved in a shootout. Oh. And a uh, guy shot at me four times with a three fifty seven Magnum. And me and myself and another trooper. And we fell in the ditch. And uh, we was taking rounds. And I got home that night, wee, wee hours in the morning. And I was trembling. I was scared so bad. Huh. And I told my wife she was alive then at the time. And I said, honey, I almost got killed last night. Oh, God. She said, what? I said, yeah, I got shot at me four times. I said, we got him. We took him out, but we locked him up. He's in prison. He's in jail now. But he liked to kill me. And I'll never forget my wife sat up next to me in bed. She said, you know what, baby? She said, you ought to finish that journal that Mm -hmm. you're working on and get it published. Because if something happened to you, honey, our boy wouldn't. I'd love for him to read about stuff you did when you were little, mm-hmm. stuff you did when you was coming up. You know, I'd love for you to fin- finish that book. And I said, baby, I'm going to do that. As God is my witness, I'll do that. Yeah. And that's what happened. That's really what happened. Four rounds from a 357 Magnum caused me to write that book. I went ahead and got it started and finished it. And that was the first book I wrote, A Simpler Place, A Simpler Time. That was my first book. And then I wrote my second book and got it published on Amazon and everything else. But people, like I say, events happen in people's lives. They just can't explain. Uh, God has something to do with everything. Mm -hmm. And God puts people in people's lives. And Al, I'm glad you said that about uh, praying for people. Mm -hmm. When people pray for people, prayer is something not to be misused. They need to think before they pray. Say, look, it ain't all about me, yeah. okay? Mm-hmm. I may have a head cold, but the guy across the street that I know has got cancer. Yeah. It's more important. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I know exactly. And you what pray you're for the need, okay? Puts, puts you. Prayer, I mean, faith and prayer is two of the strongest things on the planet. Mm-hmm. You got to have faith to have, I mean, prayer. You got to have the faith that that prayer is going to be answered. I prayed for people that I knew. I I said, my goodness, uh, please help this guy. He looks terrible. God, if you please show mercy on this man. He's got family. He's got a child. He's got children. They need him. Mm -hmm. Please help him. 
how many times has he answered my prayer? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I and I sit back sometimes. I said, Hey, have you heard from Tom? Yeah. He he took he. It's odd you mentioned that. He says, uh, I said I've been praying hard for that guy. He <laughs> said, Well, somebody has because Dad don't think he's coming out of it. And he's gonna be fine. Mm-hmm. And I can't I can't count the times. Yeah. yeah, boy, that's wisdom. I'll tell you, it's wisdom to know that yes. yeah, that yeah. life is. Sometimes, you know, unexpected things can happen, and you can just be out of here. That's why they talk about you don't appreciate it until you lose it. and you. Or even when you're close to losing it, and you don't lose it, but then you go back and you get humble about it, and you want to write about it. Yeah, like you. yeah. yeah. You, you're right. Yeah. You're right. You don't realize how lucky you are. I mean, <laughs> I've been blessed, my God. Yeah, so, you certainly have. And I, and I know I'm thankful enough to see it. Well, that's right, and you're wise enough to see it, too, and to yeah. know that, uh, wow, you can feel grateful for that. I have looked forward to meeting you, and I'd love to meet you. I pray that someday we'll meet it could be. face-to-face, and I get to shake your hand. <laughs> could be. Well, I wish you all the best with uh, with that, and it's been great having you on the show. Thank you. All right, my pleasure. Have a beautiful, beautiful life, and I know you're having you a beautiful life. You take care, and it was an honor to, an honor to talk to you. Thank you. It's been my honor to, Otis. Well,